Hi, I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structural analysis with Start Pro. I am Sudeep and I am a structural engineer and the leader of the Start Pro technical team at Bentley Systems. I have been working on Start Pro at Bentley for 17 years and prior to that I have six years of experience as a structural designer. So do not miss out on this opportunity of learning Start Pro from an expert. We are now learning about modeling properties and materials in Start Pro. In the last session, we had learned about how the concrete sections are arranged around the local access system. Today, we will learn about how we can assign the concrete sections to members in a Start Pro model. But before we go forward, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel to join us in this wonderful journey of learning structural engineering in Start Pro. And if you have been around in this channel, give it a big like if I had been able to provide some value. So we are back to our goalpost frame model. I hope you remember why do we need to model the sectional properties and materials in addition to modeling the geometry of the structure in the first place. If not, please refer to the session, the link of which is appearing on the top right of the screen right now. Let us quickly check the text editor. So let us go into utilities command file to get into the text editor. And we see that all that we have defined in the text editor are the joint coordinates and member incidences. So we have defined only the geometry of the structure. So let us get out of the text editor now. Now we intend to assign a 300 millimeter by 400 millimeter section to the beam of the goal post frame, which is designated by member number two, and we intend to assign a 300 millimeter by 500 millimeter rectangular section to the columns of the goalpost frame. And these members are designated by member number one and member number three. So let us start by assigning the beam section first. How can we do that? Well, Firstly, we need to ensure that we are in the analytical modeling mode. Just wanted to mention the whole ribbon of analytical mode is available here and they are arranged in a sequential order so that you can work in an ordered fashion as you go through the modeling process. So now that we have worked with the geometry tab by defining the geometry, we are now ready to work with the properties tab. In case you want to revisit the geometric modeling, you can view a couple of sessions in the sequential order, starting from the one, the link of which is appearing on the top of the screen right now. Now let us look into the local access system of the members. So I check in the beam orientation and we find that the local x of for this beam the local x axis is parallel to the global x axis so the local y axis is parallel to the global y axis and the local z axis is parallel to the global z axis if you are not sure of what I'm talking about, please visit the section, the link of which is appearing on the right hand top of the screen right now. So the depth of the section would be defined by YD and the width of the section of the beam would be defined by ZD. Again, if you're confused as to how I got that, please visit the last session by clicking on the link that is appearing on the screen right now. So let us click on the properties tab to define the properties. And as soon as you click on it, the properties whole structure box appears on the right side of the screen. Let us click on the define button in the properties whole structure box to define our sections. Let us select rectangle because the sections that we intend to define are rectangular sections. Now for the beam, we had a depth of 400 millimeters, which would mean 0.4 meters. And the width of the beam was 
0.300 millimeters or 0.3 meters. At this point, the working unit has been defined in meters, so we have to define the sectional dimensions in meters. The material box is checked on and the material is selected as concrete. We retain that. Once that is done, we click on the add button. Now let us close this box. Now we can see the section that we have defined in the properties whole structure box. And this section is tagged with a reference number of one. Now we want to assign this section to this beam of the gold post string. So how do we do that? There are a few assignment methods that uh, uh, appears in the properties whole structure box. For now, we select the use cursor to assign option. Once this option is selected, you click on the assign button. And as soon as you take it in the modeling area, you would see that the cursor has changed and it represents an I section which is just a representation that the cursor is now ready to assign a, a section to the beam. So let us take this cursor to this beam where we intend to assign the rectangular concrete section. So click on the beam and now we can see that the beam number two has been assigned a section that is tagged with reference number one which is indicated by this value of R1. So this means that the section of 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters has been assigned to this beam section. Now we will assign the 300 millimeter by 500 millimeter concrete section to the column sections. Again, we know that in this case, the local x-axis is parallel to the global y-axis. The local z-axis would be parallel to the global z-axis. And the local y-axis would be parallel to the global x-axis. Now let us assume that the depth of the column or the higher dimension of the rectangular section is parallel to the local y-axis of the columns. So let us go into the properties whole structure box, click on the define. Now, since I have said that the local y would be parallel to the higher dimension of the column, we will specify yd as 0 0.5 meters as it's 500 millimeters and zd the width as 0.3 meters. We retain the material as concrete and we click on the add button. Click on close and we see that the section 300 millimeters by 500 millimeters appears in the properties whole structure box with a reference number of two. Now we need to assign this section to the column sections. So in this case, we will be using the first method, which is assigning to selected beams. Oh yes, of course, we could have used the use, cu use cursor to assign as we had used before, but we are just trying to use this opportunity to learn about the various assignment methods. Now, we can see that the currently the assigning to select, assign to selected beams option is deactivated. Now, this is because we do not have any beam selected. Now, as soon as we select the required beams where we want to assign the section to, this would become active. So let us click on the column sections. Now we have the use cursor to assign uh, option active now. So that's why you could still see the cursor uh, representing an I section. So we can switch that off by pressing the escape button from the keyboard or by repressing the assign button which has now turned into assigning option. So click on the assign button. So now the assignment method is deactive and you can see that the cursor has changed back to its normal shape. Now, as soon as you select the two columns by holding down the control button, you'd see that the assign to selected beams option has become active 
and the active currently active method of assigning is has automatically been shifted to this particular method so now let us click if on the assign button and this would ask you the question that the assignment method uh, you have chosen is assigned to selected beams do you want to proceed and we say yes and as soon as we say that we can see that the reference number or the section related to reference number two has been assigned to both the column members and this can be made out because r2 this term r2 appears on the side of the column numbers of for both these columns so now the column sections have a dimension of 300 millimeters by 500 millimeters assigned to it. Now let us go into the text editor to see what has resulted out of the sections and the materials that we have assigned to the members of the goalpost frame. And as expected, we get a prompt of save. That means that something has changed into the text editor. So we click on the save button and this takes us into the text editor and we can see that a lot of information has now been added. The first information is related to the material. We can see that immediately after the member incidences, the material concrete has been defined and it starts with the line defined material star and ends with the line end defined material. Now, we can see that the concrete material has been defined by its various material properties. So, it has been defined with the sectional modulus of elasticity, that is E, the Poisson's ratio, the density, the coefficient of thermal expansion alpha, and the the damping ratio and the shear modulus all of this are in the current unit that is units of meters and kilonewtons and once the material has been defined then it has been followed by the member property that we have defined so we can see member number two which was our beam has been assigned a prismatic section with uh, depth of YD as 0.4 and ZD as 0.3 meters and the two columns represented by member numbers 1 and 3 has been assigned a prismatic section of YD as 0.5 and ZD as 0.3. So based on the section defined, STAT would automatically calculate the properties associated with the section like the cross-sectional area the, mo the moment of inertia, the torsional constant, etc. So let us go out of the text editor now. We intend to continue this, this discussion of assigning the concrete material and sections in the forthcoming sessions. I hope you have enjoyed the session today. If you have, please do hit the like button. I hope to see you again in the next one. Till then, bye-bye.